Hello everyone, welcome. After numerous tests and a lot of work, I am extremely happy to share with you the optimized custom build of Xenia Canary. Now you can enjoy the entire Forza series through this emulator. First and foremost, I would like to point out that although some bugs are still present, in my tests, I did not encounter any issues that would prevent gameplay. I tested all the games for at least half an hour each, and my computer did not experience any crashes, except for Forza Horizon 2, where there may be a crash when compiling the initial shaders. The game performance is excellent, with an average of 45 FPS at the start and over 60 FPS when there are fewer cars on the screen. It's worth noting that any value above 30 FPS is playable without any slowdown issues. The performance may improve if you have a more powerful GPU since Xenia is an emulator that relies heavily on graphical power. Due to the limited optimization of the emulator, it is recommended to have at least a GTX 970 or equivalent GPU. Before presenting the tests conducted and their results, I would like to ask that if this video is helpful to you, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel to receive news and all the latest updates from the world of emulation. This video is offered by the members and Patreons of the channel. Thank you for your support. Firstly, let's talk a bit about the build we're using in some features. Xenia, even in its latest versions, still lacks a proper user interface and an easy way to create per-game configurations. Therefore, I will show you the simplest way to perform this process. To begin, use one of the presets that I provide along with the pre-configured emulator. Open the preset, copy the entire content of the file, and then close it. The files are marked as read-only to prevent accidental loss of the preset. Next, open the zeniacanary.config file, select all characters, and replace them with the content of the preset you previously copied. Save the file after making this replacement. Due to the use of an older version to optimize the games, the latest versions cause crashes and do not run the Motorsport series. Some features are missing, such as Xbox achievements and the ability to load the last game by pressing F9. For a better visual experience, I recommend using FXAA and Fidelity FX. Other settings you can adjust include game resolution and language, but I won't go into detail on that subject. Most tests were conducted with NTSC versions of the games and in RGH games. For those who are unfamiliar, there are two file formats, RGH, which are extracted and decrypted files from Xbox 360 discs and usually take up less disk space as they don't include dumps or empty files, and ISO format which is the complete image of the Xbox 360 disc with all its elements. In general, I recommend always using the RGH format due to its disk space savings and convenience. For those who are not familiar with Xenia, it is one of the latest emulators in terms of development but is still in an early stage. It may have audio issues, some games may have problems with saves, and as mentioned earlier, the lack of a user interface along with the need to configure it solely through command lines can discourage those who are less experienced with emulators. Now let's talk about the game Forza Horizon 1. It is perfectly possible to play the game from start to finish, however, there are some bugs to be mentioned. The user interface flickers, which can cause some discomfort during gameplay, especially because the elements on the screen are constantly flickering. Another issue is related to vehicle thumbnails, most of them appear normally, but some may have problems with the thumbnail display, and so far, there is no definitive solution for this. To play Forza Horizon 1, you need to use the specific preset for the game. Although it is possible to play Forza Horizon 1 on the latest versions of Xenia, I cannot confidently say if the stability is good in those cases. Regarding Forza Horizon 2, I didn't encounter as many issues compared to the first game. Except for a minor issue with car shadow blurring, I didn't notice any problems with vehicle thumbnails, and the performance is also very good, reaching close to 60 FPS most of the time. During half an hour of testing, those were the only issues I observed. It's worth noting that the game may experience a crash during the initial startup, but after that, everything worked perfectly. Now let's talk about Forza Motorsport, starting with Forza Motorsport 2. All the games in the Forza Motorsport series should use the preset with the same name to function correctly. Among all the games I tested, this one had the weakest performance, perhaps due to the choice of a track with many graphical elements. Generally, the game maintains an average of 45 FPS, and I didn't encounter any major issues during the test. This was one of the games where I spent less testing time because even in arcade mode, the game has very little content available. When dealing with Forza Motorsport 3, I encountered several issues for which I couldn't find suitable solutions. One of the main problems is the presence of square-shaped shadows on cars. 
This issue is recurring in emulating this engine on Xenia. In the case of Forza Motorsport 4, I was able to fix this problem by making various changes to the game's configuration parameters and inserting specific code for the emulator to render the shadows correctly. However, for Forza Motorsport 3, I couldn't find the necessary parameter to fix the shadows, and it seems that the community, in general, isn't very interested in this game. Despite my efforts to find a solution, I couldn't find any forums or posts explaining how to fix this issue. Therefore, when playing this game, be aware that you will encounter problems with the shadows. However, if you wish, it is still possible to play the game even with these issues. The game's performance is not bad, averaging around 40 FPS when there are multiple cars on the screen and around 50 FPS when there are fewer cars. If you want to install the content from the second disc, you need to copy all the contents of the media folder to the DLC folder of your game. You can find more details about this process in the video available in the background. To access these files, you need to use a game in RGH format or extract the files from the ISO. Lastly, let's talk about Forza Motorsport 4. This is the most problematic game in the series when it comes to emulation, with several issues in the emulator, such as square shadows, crashes when starting the game, problems with car thumbnails, and sun rays that completely blind the vision. After two weeks of work and research to optimize as much as possible and avoid crashes, I can say that I managed to fix 90% of the issues. Currently, I have over 15 hours of gameplay in the career mode, and I haven't experienced major performance drops or crashes, both when starting the game and during gameplay. In the description, I will provide a file with all the fixes I have gathered so far. It works perfectly with the NTSC version of the game, I haven't tested it on any PAL version. To use it, you need to have the game in NTSC RGH format and extract and replace the files in the root folder of the disk. With this fix, I was able to solve the issue of square shadows during races and special events. However, I couldn't fix the problem with shadows when taking photos or in the game's interface because when I insert the configuration parameter, the game crashes or simply doesn't load. The crashes have been completely fixed in the version of the emulator I am using. So if you want to play this and all the games I mentioned so far, I recommend using this specific version of the emulator, which will be available in the video description. The fixes for the sun rays have been made, but at a cost. To solve the problem that was hindering gameplay, I had to disable the sun on all tracks. The only two issues that still persist are the ones I mentioned before, square shadows when taking car photos and, in some cars, the thumbnails may have bugs, making them unrecognizable. However, these issues have been greatly reduced. In my current career, I have around 15 cars, and only one of them has a bugged thumbnail. Now, I rely on your help. Even though I have tested many events, there may still be events or tracks that don't have the corrected configuration parameter and, therefore, still have square shadows. If you encounter any bugs, please let me know through the comments of this video, stating which track you were playing and in which mode. For example, Suzuka, Bowling Mode. This way, I can check if it's a problem I can solve or not. If I can, I will release a new version of the fix. For those who want to install the second disc, the process is the same as Forza Motorsport 3. Simply copy the contents of the media folder from disc 2 to the DLC folder of your game in Xenia. However, I recommend checking out the Forza Plus project, which offers various enhancements and new methods to play Forza Motorsport 4. The link will be available in the video description. To install it, simply extract all the contents into the DLC folder of your game. So, guys, that was the video. I hope it was helpful in some way. If you liked the content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you all, and see you in the next video.